Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. If you're a subscriber to the channel, welcome back. And if you're new, please consider subscribing and smash that little bell so you'll be notified when new videos come out. Hey, listen folks, today I'm going to give you five tips on some things that you need to be thinking about before you set out fishing for spring flathead catfish. Well, the first thing to do folks, while it's still cold and maybe there's even some snow on the ground, is to sit down and go through your tackle. If you haven't put fishing line on a reel since last year, or maybe the year before last, or maybe a couple years back, it's a good idea to re-spool your fishing rods now. Whether you use braid or mono, it's not important. It's time to put on some fresh fishing line. Start the year off right with some new line so you can eliminate a lot of problems. Folks, tie you up some new rigs also. Uh, rigs are cheap. Hooks are cheap. Put you on some new fresh hooks. Them ones from last year may be rusted. The tips may be a little bit dull. If you get that chance at a trophy flathead catfish, make sure you got some sharp hooks on there. Tie you up some new leaders, put you on some new swivels. Make sure that all your stuff is top notch and ready to go before you head out. Oh yeah, go through your tackle box or however you store your tackle. Make sure you got everything you need. There's nothing worse than getting out there on maybe that first fishing trip uh, since it got cold and realizing, oh, I left some stuff at home. Go through your tackle, pretend you have a break off and go tie up a new rig. Make sure you have everything you need. Swivels, sinkers, leader material, hooks, everything you need, make sure it's there so you're set to go once you're out there on the water fishing. Now, if you're in a position to do this, this here will make your first trip out chasing spring flatheads a lot easier, and that is finding bait before you go. As all of you know, finding bait can be a challenge. If you have the opportunity to go either A, buy bait from a bait dealer, or go somewhere to where you can catch some bait and store it in a home bait tank, it will make that first fishing trip a lot easier. We all know the frustration of getting out there and struggling to find bait, especially when the water is a little bit cooler during this early spring start for flatheads. It's nice to already have that bait in the tank and ready to go. Now, not everybody has the luxury. Many people have to travel a long ways to get to water to fish. But if you've got a small pond, possibly a park lake or something where you can catch bluegill or maybe some suckers or uh, gizzard chad, you're going to be much better off and less stressed if you got that bait before you head out on the water. This next tip is an important one and may dictate when you should actually start fishing. And that is watch the weather. Start paying attention to what temperature trends are doing. Once temperatures start to trend up a little bit, and sometimes on your local weather, your local news, or possibly on the NOAA website, it will show the daily mean temperature. That's basically the average temperature from the lowest to the highest as far as what it is overall during the day. That temperature, generally speaking, corresponds to what the weather temperature is. So once that daily mean temperature starts to get into the 60s here in the southeast, it may be the 50s uh, in other parts of the country, that is when we start to see those spring flatheads showing up. For us around here, 62, 63, flatheads are starting to show up in the spring and they're starting to become active and they're starting to feed. The reason I say watch the weather is because it varies year to year. Sometimes, for like us here in the south, mid-March is when it starts to get good and generally by April, the spring flathead bite is on. Some years, it may be way earlier. And then other years with some long extended cold periods, it may be well into April before the time is right to go out there and focus on flatheads. So start paying attention to your weather. In addition to this, look at the rainfall, look how much inflow of water. And this really becomes important for you guys who have to travel somewhere uh, to find fish. I'm lucky that I'm very close to the lake that I fish. Some of you may have to travel an hour, two hours to get to a place to fish. And if you've got that limited time and that limited access to water, you kind of want to make the most of your opportunities and go when the fishing is reasonably good and you've got a reasonably good chance of catching fish. So keep an eye on that weather and on what the temperatures are doing. Now, in addition to keeping an eye on the weather and doing your homework there, get online and start doing some homework on Navionics, Google Earth, even a Facebook fishing group. 
The reason all of these tools are important is because they can give you little tidbits of information. If you're going to fish a new body of water, it really pays to look at it online on some mapping software like Navionics and some of the other popular ones out there. You can also look at stuff on Google Earth just to see what the contours are of the river and the surrounding areas. It's a good way to kind of be armed before you go into your first fishing trip, especially if you're fishing on new bodies of water. Facebook, believe it or not, can also be a good place to kind of see what's going on. Uh, you will start to see fish show up in some of the more popular catfish groups on Facebook like Catfish in America. You can go in there and you'll see trends start to happen. And you can see this throughout the years. It's a get very good place to get an idea of what's going on with fishing uh, when people are catching. You'll see it later on in the year as flathead catfish and blue catfish start to spawn the bite and the number of fish pitchers start to go down. But once we get into summer, get past that, usually into that July time frame, on later into July, you'll start seeing a bunch of flatheads start reappearing in those pitchers. It's a good gauge just to see what's going on. And again, this is very important for you guys that may have to travel a little ways to do some fishing. It's a good way to make sure you maximize your time out there on the water. So while social media can be a pain in the butt and stuff online can have some bad points to it, some of the great points about it is it gives us an opportunity to access a lot of information that can not only make us better fishermen, but make us better managers of our limited time. Now my fifth tip is something I started doing a few years ago and uh, this may or may not work where you're at, but if you have bluegill, sunfish, once I start catching these fish up relatively close to the bank, because in the winter when it's cold, our fish pull off deeper, they're usually near deeper structure, they're in deeper water. When I start catching these fish up close to the bank, relatively easy in a couple of feet of water underneath a bobber, that tells me that the flathead catfish are also up cruising that area looking for fish. So that's kind of my little hint there early on in the spring when I can go out there and catch me a limb and a bluegill to use for bait right up near the bank, right up near some rocks, right up near some trees fairly shallow. That's my clue that there will be flathead catfish coming through that same area to feed on those bluegill. Well folks, hopefully that gives you some good information to get out there and start chasing those flathead catfish this spring. It's coming on on that time, March, April is when they start feeding and they start moving. And it's a great time to put some hungry, aggressive flathead catfish in the boat before the spawn gets here. Well folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. And here are a couple of more videos that I think you're gonna like.